Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. A little later in the program, we're gonna be talking about that wascally rabbit. You're gonna love this story. When does having a rabbit become a crime? I'm gonna tell you, that's good. But first, I thought I'd take a look at the sad, sad, sad state of local media today from CompleteColorado.com and from the Independence Institute. Todd Shepard, thanks for being here. Thanks, as always, for having me on the show, John. Glad right, to be you, with you. you. You have a remarkably unique position in the city. <laughs> all right, this is, this, this, this is good, all right? You, you put together this, this nice little website called CompleteColorado.com. I, I don't want to break this to you. It looks a lot like the Drudge Report. Really? I mean, it, yeah, it's got, it's got. I hired the best designers <laughs> you, could, you could find on the, you know. Uh, I'm amazed that, that that still works. You know, the Drudge, Drudge just gets all this traffic on such an ugly, ugly page. You do the exact same thing with Complete Colorado. I'm sure they love you over at Drudge, um, and you're a news aggregator. You bring together these news stories, and then you break break your own your own stuff. Why why do people like that? that format there's there's many reasons and as you said uh, the sad state of uh, local media um, it's not any of those professionals fault uh, of course it's the you know as they say the the pay model right that they they have yet to find a, a, a pay model that will work for newspapers now that they've lost various revenues like classified advertising and so forth but the other reason that it works is obviously with the internet we have this democratization of journalism really where anyone can can do journalism really and that's a great thing and so one of the uh, uh, why? <laughs> why is it a great thing I mean one of the things that brings a comfort level when you open up the Denver Post or back then the Rocky Mountain News is that you there was this illusion at least I don't know if it was true that these stories have been vetted that this what you read is the God honest truth now they might be missing a quote here or there but that there's a check and balance system, whereas people online are pushing an agenda first and finding the stories that, that they like to push that agenda or making those stories. Even if they have an agenda, the, the, the important thing about the democratization of journalism is the fact that everybody views, I mean, they start with different worldviews, and so what might be a scandal to you might not be a scandal to someone in the Denver Post. Um, I know we'll talk about my refrigerator story here in just a little bit. And again, that's the sort of thing that I thought was very worth documenting uh, to the public and saying this is exactly what happened, even though quite a, a few of them may have, may have known that that's exactly what was happening. But to, to step back and, and put it in a larger perspective, that's, uh, again, one man's scandal is not necessarily someone else's, but that's why it's better to include all of these different people's world views and here's, their journalism views. Here's the other issue, though. The Denver Post has this n enormous reach, or at least it did, now it's shriveling up. The four stations, five stations, they've got a large reach. Blogs, individual websites, individual journalists that put up their own websites, yeah, if you get a 500 people reading it, uh, uh, that's huge for, for a website. I know you do much better than that on Complete Colorado, but it doesn't have the, this, the same bounce. Denver Post writes something, puts it on its headline, and, and there you have it. Agreed, but that's one of the things that Complete Colorado strives to do is um, because we are so familiar with many of these bloggers, many of these citizen journalists, because we've been familiar with them for a number of years, we have a, a level of trust with them that when they break something, you know, if we can, we either know it's right just by looking at the story and we can go ahead and, and link to it and publish it uh, and promote it, or if there's one maybe question, we know who the author of the blog is. We can pick up the phone, uh, make sure that we're understanding the story correctly, and then get the link up. Let me say one other thing before you hit the next question. The other thing is, is, is the Denver Post, as you say, for being the, the big news gorilla in town, the one thing that, that you've got to remember is the TV stations do great investigative journalism. They really do. But most of the time, because of this sense of proprietary, well, they did that. And, and we, you know, we publish our works and they publish their works. But if something really, uh, is, if there's a really good investigative piece by Brian Moss by, uh, at Channel 4, doesn't that deserve to be included in the Denver Post? Now, if it obviously hits this huge level of scandal, they'll rewrite it and they'll no, say, me, as first me, broken by Channel let me say, 4. Let me say it in a different way. If 
it's on Channel 9, and Channel 9 has a working relationship with the Denver Post. If it goes on 9, you might get it in the Post. If it's a Post, you might get it on 9. Channel 4 does it, or 7 does it. Um, then does the Post do it? Well, if it's a big enough story, yeah, they have to do it, but it doesn't get covered. I, I want to talk about one of the stories that, that you broke, which I thought was fascinating. Let me, let me set this up first. Sure. We have this great presidential race going on. Colorado is the target state. And so one of the things that's been used against Romney is he's a vulture capitalist. He works for Bain. He owns part of Bain. He's made a lot of money by firing people and closing down factories. He, what he's done is consolidated things. He's, he just squeezes it out. He doesn't create anything. He's just a nasty venture <laughs> capitalist. And even the president himself has called out the way that his opponent has made money by destroying jobs, closing factories. You thought that was interesting because you? I was just doing some research one night. Uh, there's a great website called OpenSecrets.org, and they are really the clearinghouse now of all federal campaign giving. And so you can track all kinds of federal campaign track uh, or political giving, excuse me. So I'm just looking at the website one night, uh, and I noticed that Federico Pena has given $5,000 to President Barack Obama's reelection efforts. Nothing surprising there. Federico Pena, of course, uh, still a Democratic leader in this state, uh, really a Democratic leader in the in the West. Not only not only former mayor of the city of Denver, but also uh, Bill Clinton's transportation secretary and his energy secretary. Reason we have DIA and thus Pena Boulevard. Exactly. So uh, after he left the Clinton administration in 1998, he went to work for a venture capital group called Vestar Capital. They have offices in New York and in Denver. And um, so he, and he was made a partner into Vestar Capital in 2000. And of course, what, what I really did from that point was I looked at, well, what are the acquisitions Vestar Capital has made? And they had invested in Solo Cup, if you've ever been to a keg party. you know, I the, have never been right, to well, a keg party. If you ever go, John, Panther. you get this yeah. uh, red Solo Cup. Uh, they bought Solo Cup, they bought Bird's Eye Foods, they bought Del Monte, everybody knows Del Monte the, with their green beans and so forth. But in each of these cases, after they had bought each of those companies, they, in, in most cases, they closed down factories that were, in, in essence, excess overhead. They laid off workers, and one would assume that they did this to keep the companies profitable so that they could keep the companies alive. Now, were they going to sell them down the road, hopefully for a profit to Vestar Capital? Sure, that, that's what they're in the business of doing. Right, so big, big deal. You've got a guy giving money to the Obamas uh, for re-election, and he's, he's a venture capitalist. But the main, the real tie is, uh, and it's, it's very um, customary for uh, a, a running president to have a lot of co-chairs, right? The, it's, it's like a company having 40 vice presidents, right? It's a very nice title. It's, it's very, um, what's the word, where you don't really do so much of what the title expects of you. It's just a way to flatter the person. It's a way to honor them. It, it, honor them, flatter them. But he is still, nonetheless, a co-chair for the Obama campaign. This is so delicious. <laughs> i got to tell you, I just love this. So one of the national co-chairs for Obama is himself an evil vulture capitalist just like that Bane-loving Romney. Not only that, but you've got Federico Pena sometimes introducing the president when he comes to Colorado. That would be like having Romney introduce the president when, when he comes to Colorado. A national co-chairman of the campaign is a Bane-like vulture capitalists. You did this story and it was shot on fire throughout throughout the nation online. It was on the Daily Caller, it was on the Examiner, it was right. it was it was I forget all the places. And and even Rush Limbaugh, not what you call mainstream, but certainly mainstream for talk radio, right. picked it up and did a full segment reading your story almost verbatim right. and then playing the clip of, of Obama denouncing that type of behavior of closing down factories and firing people. And so I was waiting the next day for the Denver Post to take the obvious thing. This is our former mayor, and he's doing, ex he's the national chair, and he's doing what Romney does. I didn't find the story. 
Well, it did appear about 10 days later, and it wasn't in a story format. Uh, Vincent Carroll, of course, the uh, former columnist at the Rocky Mountain News, who then transferred over to the Denver Post, he did write an article called uh, how, how We Make Money, or something to that effect. And he illustrated uh, a couple of the points that I had made in the article. So Vincent Carroll did pick up on it. Uh, For those people who dig into the paper, find Vince's, uh, Vince's, but shouldn't this have been a news story? Um, I mean, it just seemed like one of those great gotcha stories. I think it goes back, at the very least, and this isn't a criticism of the Denver Post, but this is why having a multitude of news judgments and having a democratization of publishing is a good thing. All right, you also did a little investigative piece on refrigerators. Talking about the beer party. It's, it's at the beer party. <laughs> yeah, it's at the beer party. Yeah, the kegerator, which again, I don't know how to use that either. The um, do you remember those party balls? Remember Coors came out with a party ball? Do you know there's a what firehouse? Uh, there's a firehouse out in the uh, Eastern Plains. They've, they've got a kegerator right there in the. Really? Oh yeah. I gotta get one for the office. I don't know why. It's but yeah, I remember the party ball. Whatever oh. happened to that little pump? And you, you throw it away. <laughs> it was. Uh, You're dating yourself. I am dating. <laughs> we'll go back. And we'll have a Zima. All right, back to the story. This, you were also taking a look at another story that I thought was going to get some serious traction here locally about refrigerators. Specifically about weatherization. Uh, when the stimulus bill was signed, of course, famously signed here in Denver, the president uh, said, we're going to go weatherize and, and, and all of these homes across America and save money for all of these people. Well, I think, and I, and I did not do this, but I think if you were to go down to the 16th Street Mall and do a man on the street interview or just ask the average person, what do you think weatherization means? I think they'd give you answers like it means weather stripping, attic insulation, and uh, you know maybe putting some caulk around the windows to seal breezy winds at windows. But what happened in Colorado was the governor's energy office gave away 4,100 completely brand new refrigerators. Now, you had to meet certain income requirements, so you would not qualify, John. I'm sure the first thing that went through your mind was, where's mine? Uh, uh, you would not qualify because you're not 200% uh, below the federal poverty status or whatever the well, now, income. Now that I'm divorced. <laughs> but I think, again, it's, it's a, a good example of where um, w what may be newsworthy to one person is not necessarily new newsworthy so, to another. You, I think Tea Party types are very interested in this kind of news. The point, the point being that these are stories that I think are reasonable stories but when you've got the state giving away 4100 ref brand new refrigerators and obvious corporate welfare that this would be a story you put it out on complete Colorado uh, and nothing well we're, uh, we, are, we are at least hopeful that uh, a TV station might pick this up a little bit further down the, the, road. the, the larger story here as we finish this up what it, what should people know want to know if when they're looking at news uh, when you're looking at news, uh, really try to find more outlets and um, even pay attention to not just my aggregator, but even the Huffington Post. Aggregators are a great way to make sure that all of these external or extraneous uh, news outlets will find their way to your eyeballs. How much longer until the Post goes down to two days a week publishing? Uh, boy, that's a great question. I think the better question is how long before the Post institutes a paywall? The paywall's right around the corner. Paywall meaning you pay in order to see the website. Absolutely. It'll be a news peep show. <laughs> Todd, thank you. You stay tuned.